So we're going to be looking at the trapezium rule and what this is is effectively a way of answering definite integrals by getting a numerical value without actually having to do any integration. Um, so the idea is we're more interested in the actual numerical value or an approximate numerical value rather than um, the exact answer. And this is a method that's specifically used for definite integrals. So this is not for um, indefinite integrals where you're getting, getting a function and then integrating it to get another function. Instead, this is only used for when we're integrating something which has limits. So it's a definite integral and we're going to get um, a numerical answer. So then um, with that in mind, I just want to talk about briefly this idea of you know a function being hard to integrate. Um, now you probably already have a concept of what it means that for a function to be hard to integrate, uh, as in literally you see a function and you're trying to find its integral and it's difficult. Um, you've got various tools at your disposal, integration by parts, integration by substitution and so on, but sometimes um, it's just the case that a function is a little bit is, is too difficult to integrate or perhaps it could even be that there is no um, solution that you can express in terms of the usual mathematical functions. In fact, technically speaking, uh, out of all the infinite amount of functions that you could possibly define, pretty much all of them are hard to integrate, quote unquote. Um, so I, let me just give you an example of what I mean, for example. So, you know, if I give you, say, 1 minus x, okay, so this, this is one I, I've just sort of made up in advance, um, you know, 1 minus x all to the power of sine x plus ln x, you know, that's hard to integrate. If, if I just tell you, you know, find the integral of this, that's going to be very difficult. And, you know, you can always make it harder. I, I mean, I could think of anything, really. I could say, you know, take um, x all to the power of that thing. These are all valid functions, right? It takes an input and it gives me an output. So I could graph it but it's, it's quite a horrible looking function and you're not going to be able to just find the integral that easily. Um, but what we can do potentially is find the definite integral of such a difficult function. So if I say give you two limits and let's say they were actually specific numbers, uh, let's say in this case I'm going to go with two and four, now, that is going to be a number as an answer, and this trapezium rule that we're going to use is going to be able to give us an answer to this kind of question, even though we don't actually know how to find the integral of that function. So let's take a look at the, uh, the function itself. As I said, I've just made this one up, and um, I've chosen it to be you know, something that's difficult to integrate, if you can integrate this, go ahead, tell me how you did it. But um, in theory, it's difficult to integrate. And yet, you plot it, and you know it's just like any other function. It's continuous. It doesn't look particularly complicated, at least within this range. Um, if you do plot the full thing, you'll notice that as we get larger than 4, you know, as x goes to infinity this way, it starts to go a little bit crazier up here. But at least within this range, it's fine. So looking then at that specific problem I suggested, which was integrating it from 2 to 4 of that function, okay, we're going to try and come up with a way of getting an answer for this, which is uh, meaningful, right, which it will be an approximate solution. So the first thing to recognize is simply the fact that clearly this number must exist, right, because if I mark on the graph, x equals 2 and x equals 4, and I suppose the x-axis, right, so this is the bounds of that thing, then this, um, oh, that's going to take me a while to shade. Let me just fast forward briefly. Okay, there we go. Um, this sort of slightly poorly shaded region, uh, the yellow region, that, whatever the area of that yellow region is, is going to be the answer to this question. Okay, so this is going back to what the actual definition of integration is. Um, so we need to think of a way to approximate this. Um, so we're going to do it for this specific case, and then in a moment we'll also see how we can generalize this. So this is the method we're going to use. 
let's try splitting up the area into several vertical columns. So uh, you can see here this ranges from two to four. And if we just go with these little grid lines here, we can see then it's going to be 2.5, 3, 3.5 here, and then 4. Okay. And I'm going to arbitrarily pick a few different vertical lines, okay, to split up this region. Okay. Um, now I said arbitrarily, so I've arbitrarily chosen four, four strips, right? There's four yellow strips now vertically. Um, but what's not so I've kept the distance between them the same though, so that's important. Um, I've kept so the strips have the same width. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a diagonal line, okay, a straight diagonal line, and I'm going to connect the tips of these vertical lines that I've just drawn, okay. And you're going to see that for some of these. And it's not my bad drawing. This is this is obviously reality. There is just here, for example, a tiny bit of yellow which is missed. Right? There's a little bit of gap between the green diagonal line and the red line, and likewise here. Whereas, for example, in this strip, the green line is fairly accurate. Of course, if you zoomed in on this region, you'd see again there is in fact a gap. Right? So it's not perfect. So hopefully, then you can see that these four shapes. Okay. Let's call them. Um, area 0, area 1, area 2, and area 3. This summation, if I were able to figure out those four areas, then this would be quite a good approximation, I hope you can agree, for what that integral is. So I can technically write it this way, it's approximately equal to wavy line equals that that definite integral is approximately equal to the sum of those four areas. So now that next step of actually finding those areas, that's not going to be too difficult. And why is that? Because, um, as you probably guessed from you know the title of the video, and if you sort of read ahead to how this rule works, those strips are all trapeziums. They're all trapezium shapes, right? Even though um, sort of the bottom of them is a uh, or I should say, you know, one side of them is vertical, that doesn't particularly matter. Uh, they're still trapeziums. They're trapeziums on their side because uh, they've got two parallel lines and then those two parallel lines are connected with uh, straight lines. So we know the rule for a trapezium. It's um, the area rule, I should say. It's um, taking the average of the, of the two um, sort of parallel lines so, for example, for A0, I would take this length plus that length divided by 2, multiply by the width, right? And similarly for A1, I'm going to take that length and that length, add them together, divide by 2, multiply by the width, okay? Now, the width is the same in all cases, right? The width is uh, the difference between 2 and 4, which is 2, divided by 4 strips. So 2 over 4, that gives me uh, 1 half. So let me write this here already. For all of these, I'm going to be working out a half times whatever um, these, these two other sides are averaged. So now what I'm going to do to sort of facilitate my notation is I'm going to say, I'm going to use f of x to refer to this function, right? f of x is the function inside the integral. And then, uh, looking at, say, a naught, I'm going to say f of 2 plus f of 2.5 all over 2. That is the average of these two heights, right? Because this, this height here is what happens when I put 2 into the function. And this height here is what happens when I put 2.5 into the function, right? Um, because just to remind ourselves, this is 2.5, this is 3, and this is 3.5. Okay. Similarly, for A1, I can say, well, the left-hand vertical um, of the A1 strip is going to have a height of f of 2.5. 
the right hand has a height of f of 3. Divide that by 2 to find the average height, multiplied by this width, and that's the area of A1. And then we can finish that off, and we end up with this. Okay. Um, now, these values, these numbers here, f of 2, f of 2.5, and so on, those we can all just get by plugging uh, the input into this function here, right? If I want to know f of 2, just plug 2 into this value here, into this function, you'll get a, a decimal of some kind. So it's a, it's a bit long-winded. You'll have to, you know, use your calculator, plug all that stuff in, and um, see what you end up with. And then you're going to add up all of these separate areas, and you should get an approximation for this. Um, if you want to give it a quick go, you can. I'll just pause for a moment. Okay, and I've actually, I've just gone ahead and looked up um, sort of quite a precise answer to this integral. And this is what I got. Now, just to be clear, if you did go ahead and work all this out, out um, well, well done for, for going through that effort. But if you've added that all up, you may not get exactly this. So this number I've just written here, this is the number I got when I plugged this integral itself into you know a more advanced calculator which is able to do these kinds of integrals um, by effectively using this method but um, a bit more accurately but if you did plug it in you should hopefully have got a number which if it's not this is quite close to this you know within the region of four so adding up all this should have given you something in the region of four and uh, in fact even just by sort of counting a bit of you know grid squares we can see that roughly makes about sense doesn't it because 4 is the area of this big square that I'm tracing out and the yellow region you know if you shift this down here roughly comes out to be about 4 yeah so then you've got a little bit of a sanity check there that makes about sense okay so that's the method uh, as we've used for this specific function what we then want to do is um, generalize this rule meaning to come up with a, uh, a rule and a description of how to do this so that it'll work for any function. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so this time um, I've still kept the, sa the same picture of a function just to sort of illustrate um, what's going on. But I want you to think that the steps I'm about to describe, they could work for any function, right? So here are the steps we're going to take. We're going to say, first of all, I'm going to pick a certain number of strips. So let's say um, n strips. Okay. So for example, in the previous slide, we had four strips. Now I'm just going to say an arbitrary number, n. Right? And hopefully you can um, imagine that if I pick a larger number of strips, I'm going to get a, a more accurate answer. Right? So uh, let me just draw on a few strips. And this time I'm going to do is, um, I'll do a few strips, okay. The important thing is the same distance apart. But then I'm just going to sort of do dot, dot, dot. Um, hopefully you can see that. So sort of something goes on. And then I have a few more extra strips, okay. So the idea is, I'm kind of trying to imagine that, you know, there's some arbitrary number of strips. I don't know exactly how many, but I know they're the same length, uh, same width, I should say. And I've got some fixed number of them a, uh, fixed number of them n. And now I'm going to label to be more general. I'm going to label the the start of the integral. So the x value where we first are interested in as a, and this final part b. So that a in this specific case would be two, and the b would be four. But I want you to think of it more generally as a and b. Okay, so now let's think about what is the width of each strip according to what we've written so far. Okay, uh, have a think about that. You should be able to come up with an answer. How can I describe the width of each strip? So what we're going to say is uh, it's equal to take the whole width, which is the B value minus the A value. So it's b minus a, 
and then divide it by however many strips I have, right, which is n. Uh, that's a little n there. And that width of each strip, we're going to call that h. Okay, h refers to the width of each strip. Or you can think of the h as effectively being the height of the trapezium, uh, which corresponds to the width of each strip. Right. So h equals b minus a over n. I'm just going to write that a bit nicer if I can. Uh, it's b minus a over n. Okay, good. So if you give me a and b and n, I can give you the width. And then the next step is to think about, right, how am I going to come up with the area of each of these trapeziums? So before I use the notation, you know, I'm going to call that one a0. I'm going to call that one a1, area 1. This one's a2. Okay. Now, if we think, you know, how many... How many strips do I have? If I've got n strips, then this final strip is going to be a um, n minus 1. Okay. I could have labelled it a1, a2, a3, all the way up to a n. That doesn't particularly matter um, because we'll see in a moment we're not going to have to actually directly use um, the a's, the capital a's, in our final expression. But they're, they're a temporary bit of labelling that we're going to make use of to get our rule. So that's me naming them. And then let's just sort of see if we can spot the pattern, right? So A0 is equal to uh, the width of the trapezium, or I suppose the height in this case. The width of the strip, which is the same as the height of the trapezium. H times the average of the two vertical parts. The first one... Um, what's that going to be? So we're going to introduce a tiny bit more uh, labelling on the x-axis here. I'm going to call this first vertical strip, this first vertical green strip, uh, y0. And this one will be y1, this one will be y2, this one's y3, dot, 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 dot. Um, so then therefore... Uh, what we've got here, this one's um, y n minus 1. And I've actually missed off drawing a, a strip here, right? Because we're going up to 4, aren't we? And then that strip there, that is uh, y n. That one's y n. And I suppose if you wanted to label this strip over here as well, that one's y n minus 2. Okay. Because if you've got n strips, you've got n plus 1. Um, you know, vertical lines which are separating up those strips. Okay, so now let's go back to this A0 expression. We've got A0 equals H times, and now we can call it um, Y0 plus Y1 over 2. And A1 I can call H times uh, Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Dot, dot, dot. Um, a n minus 1 is going to be equal to h times, uh, let's make sure we do this correctly. So we'll have y n minus 1 plus y n all over 2. And that's it, isn't it? Uh, and in fact, I'm just going to add one more just so the pattern's a bit more obvious. I'm going to say, what was a n minus 2? That would be h times uh, y n minus 2 plus y n minus 1 all over 2. OK. And now we're going to add all this up. So what you'll notice is, if we add that to that to that to that and also everything in between, I'm going to see h not once, then I'm going to see h1 twice, I'll see h2 twice, because I'll see it here and then somewhere in here. I'll see h... Oh, sorry, I keep saying h. I should be saying y. Let me go back on myself slightly there. You're going to see y0 once, y1 and y1 twice, y2 and y2 twice, and so on. yn minus 2, and then again yn minus 2 twice. yn minus 1, yn minus 1 twice. yn will appear once. So everything will appear twice except this y0 and this yn, which appear once. You add all that up, and 
you know, we're going to say the total of all A's. Okay, this is equal to, if I add those up, a half times H. So I'm taking out the division of two outside the bracket. And we're going to get Y naught plus two lots of Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 plus and so on all the way up to Yn minus one. Two lots of that and then also a single Yn. Okay, And this thing we have here now this is our expression in general for the trapezium rule. So you need to work out what your h is for a given number of strips n. Then you need to work out the corresponding heights. These green lines, their length is the same as these y values. Plug all that in and that will be your expression for any integral that you're given, any definite integral. So let me just uh, make that a bit more prominent then. Um, so we've got n strips. So these n strips tell me that the width of each strip is this. And the approximation, uh, so then the approximate Uh, integral is this and that is for uh, something which goes from the integral of a to b of uh, some function okay uh, and what I haven't written down here on the screen is you know how exactly are you you know getting these y0 y1 values but that should be quite quite obvious you're effectively splitting up the range from a to b into these, you know, n strips, and then you get your y, uh, your x naught, your x one, all the way up to x n. Plug that into your f function, and that gives you a corresponding y value, y naught, y one, and so on, all the way up to y n. Okay, um, so that's the general rule. Let's now look at a, a specific example to just clarify it once more. Okay, so let's look at this example. And I've just uh, sort of copied across our, our results from the previous page. So you're given uh, a curve y equals sec x, uh, and you're asked to find that finite region r bounded by the curve, and it's between the x equals 0 and the x equals pi over 3 line. Um, and then you're, you're given, so mercifully, they've given us you know, uh, some of the values already, so we don't have to bother working those out. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, with trapezium rule, you are going to have to use a lot of calculator work. Um, you, you make sure you've got, you've got a good technique in terms of how you use your calculator so you're not accidentally introducing errors. Because the more key presses you need to make on your calculator, the more um, potential there is for, for screwing it up. So uh, you want to try and be efficient in how you do your calculations. Also, I'm just going to point out that this function probably isn't actually that hard to integrate. So in terms of the real world, trapezium rule tends to be used when you can't actually perform the integration yourself. However, uh, in this simpler example, we probably could have done so. Um, but in any case, let's give this a go. So for part A, it says complete the table with the values of y corresponding to this. Okay, so let's just make sure we're also noting what's going on in terms of the number of strips. How many strips have we got here with this table? It's not going to be five because these are essentially our green vertical lines and the strips are what's in between them. So it's actually uh, four strips, four vertical strips. So let's make a note already, n is equal to four. Okay. Um, right, and then let's, uh, let's actually, also before we then complete the table, what's h going to be? Okay, so in this case, h ranges from... 0 to pi over 3, that's our a and b. Find the difference, you get pi over 3, divide that by n, which is 4, and you get pi over 12. Okay, pi over 12. And what you should notice 
is that um, although they technically haven't told you this explicitly, or have they? they sh I don't think they've told you explicitly, but 0 plus pi over 12 is obviously pi over 12. Add pi over 12 to that, you get pi over 6. Add pi over 12 to that, you get pi over 4. Add pi over 12 to that, you get pi over 3. It just so happens that all these those fractions end up simplifying, so it's not immediately obvious that the difference between all these x values is the same. But it is. The difference between each of these is pi over 12. So this is the table, effectively, for calculating the heights of these strips. Uh, let's uh, then plug pi over 6 and pi over 4 into the calculator. So we're going to say sec of pi over 6, sec of pi over 4. What do we get? So this is what I got when I put it in the calculator. Um, it, the question said three decimal places. Uh, I didn't listen. I decided to do four decimal places uh, just because I want to be that little bit more accurate. Uh, obviously, in a real test, you would just put three decimal places. Um, so that's the table done. Easy. Now it's saying use the trapezium rule with all these values of y to obtain an estimate of r. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So um, let's just label these appropriately. This one here, this is our y0, this is y1, this is y2, this is y3, and this is y4. Or technically yn, right? Because n is 4. Um, and then you're just going to have to work this out. What is a half times h times uh, the y0 plus, in fact, I've written it up here, haven't I? So we're working this out. So in fact, let's just start plugging the numbers in. We're going to work out a half times the height, which is uh, pi over 12. I keep saying height. It's rich. It's the width of the strip, and we call it h, technically the height of the trapezium. A half times the h times, and then y0 is 1 plus two lots of um, you know, 1.035 plus 1.1547 plus 1.4142. And then at the very end, we just add a single instance of y4, which is 2. Okay, so that expression is now all numbers. We plug it into our calculator and we see what we get. And when I plug that in, I got 1.33. Uh, six, yeah, to three decimal places. Uh, they wanted two decimal places, so um, let's just say roughly 1.34. So what we worked out there is, in theory, if we just state it finally, the integral from zero to pi over three of sec of x is approximately 1.34 okay and we didn't have to do any integration to get that number we just use the trapezium rule okay and then part c this is where we use a bit of geometric intuition explain with a reason whether your estimate in part b will be an underestimate or an overestimate now what you can't do is for example try and work out the actual integral get the real answer you know, whatever it may be, and say, oh, it's then therefore it's a bit above or a bit below. Because really, the whole point of this is that we can't find this integral. So how am I going to know whether it's slightly above or slightly below? So the reasoning here is to think about the strips and whether or not the diagonal lines which are joining them are a bit below, a uh, bit below, bit above or a bit below the... Um, the, the graph, the, the actual black line graph, okay? So if I draw these strips on, just roughly speaking, so how many were there? Uh, there were four, right? So uh, in fact, let me just cut this in the middle and then in the middle again, and then I can make sure they're roughly equally spaced. Okay, so we've got these four strips uh, that I'm drawing on the thing, and then we drawing them up with diagonal lines, okay? And it might be a bit hard to see, but um, so if you imagine, you know, you're zooming in on this, just ask yourself the question, is the, green, is the diagonal green lines, are they above the black curve or below the black curve? And because this black curve is increasing in the way it is, 
you can intuitively see that the green lines, the horizontal green lines, the diagonal ones, are above the black line, right? So if they're above the black line, that means they're including extra area. So therefore, this number we have here must be an overestimate, okay? Just in case that's not clear, uh, let me just draw a slightly sort of larger uh, version of this, just briefly. So let's say you've got a curve like that, okay? And you've got a strip, which is green coming up, okay? So this is me sort of zooming in on the strip. And then look, you've got a tiny little bit of extra area here, which the uh, the green strip has included. This uh, this tiny bit of yellow here, that's a bit of extra area, that tiny bit there. And our approximation has included that bit of yellow, but in reality, that bit of yellow is not under the curve. So that's why it's an overestimate. Okay, and that's uh, and that's your reasoning. So the answer is, in that case, it's an overestimate, and the reason is because the strips um, include this extra area because the trapeziums are um, above the curve in each instance. In fact, if I want to be truly precise, then the wording I would use is the graph is convex, therefore the trapeziums um, overestimate the area. Okay, so it's time to have a, a go at a few questions yourselves. Um, I'm only including three questions overall, only because there's there's a little bit of... Uh, the thing with trapezium rule is you have to end up using your calculator quite a bit and unfortunately spending time pressing buttons on a calculator, which it's not really what maths is about, but um, you do need to do it so that you're, you're, you're clearly showing that you can actually perform this process and perform it accurately. Um, so a couple, the two questions coming later will have a little bit you know, of integration practice as well. So it's not all just plugging into calculators. But uh, take a look at this one first. This is just to get you started to make sure you can actually perform the correct process on your calculator. So not really much of a hint I can give here. Just give it a go. Pause your video now. Okay, and then uh, the answer you should get, uh, well, I think the first one's your missing value, and then part B is uh, the actual area. And hopefully that agrees. If it doesn't agree, you probably just typed something wrong in your calculator. Okay, and then uh, this question, a little bit more interesting, partly because um, at the very end, part D, you're going to actually, in this case, this function, you can integrate it using whichever methods you know about. And you're going to be able to then demonstrate that the approximation is in fact very close to the, to the real value. And for part B, all this is effectively asking you to do is to do it once with three strips. Uh, is that three strips? No, sorry, I should be a bit more, no, two strips, right? So you've got three values, that's two strips. And for part two, you're going to use four strips because you've got five values that corresponds to four strips, okay? Give this question a go and uh, see if you can get, uh, in theory, if you can do the integration in D, you'll be able to check your answer makes sense without waiting for me to show you. Give it a go, pause your video now. Okay, and there's your answer. And then finally, you can have a go at this one. So again, using trapezium rule, part C, you get to have a go at integrating the function yourself as well uh, with a bit of integration by parts. And you can see if it's the same. Give that a go, pause your video now. Okay, and then your answer is here. 